Welcome to Financial Analysis. This course is about the analysis of information arising primarily from the published financial reports of firms. We'll examine, examine fundamental analysis techniques in detail, and there'll be a particular emphasis on the application of these techniques in equity or share valuation decisions. The course is structured in a way that follows the process that security analysts and equity researchers and consultants use in approaching their tasks. We first examine business strategy. Without understanding how a business makes money and the extent to which that's likely to change in the future. In doing so, we consider both industry conditions a firm faces and also the competitive strategy that the firm uses to position itself within an industry. If we don't undertake this strategy analysis, then we won't be able to properly interpret the financial statements, and more importantly, we won't be able to make sensible forecasts. We next undertake accounting analysis. In this section, we develop the tools to determine the extent to which a company's financial statements are likely to reflect the underlying economics of the business. We'll consider the role of the accounting rules and focus on important accounting decisions. Firms complement their mandated financial information with a wide range of financial as well as non-financial disclosures. Some of these are required, but some are provided voluntarily. We'll spend a unit examining these corporate disclosures with a particular emphasis on ESG reporting, which is rapidly increasing in its importance to firms, investors and regulators. Having thought about the business strategy and industry conditions, and considered the extent to which we think a firm's financial statements are of high or low quality, and adjusted if need be, we're then in a much better position to commence our ratio analysis. In this section of the course, we assess a firm's recent performance. We start off with a comprehensive measure of performance, return on equity, that is, income divided by a shareholder's equity. It measures the accounting performance from the perspective of the shareholders. We'll then think about how to take parts of ROE that reflect how different business functions are performing. One structured way of doing this is to decompose ROE into profit margins, asset turnovers and then leverage. This allows us to assess the performance of a firm's day-to-day -day operations, the effectiveness of their use of assets and whether the financing mix is appropriate or not. By undertaking our ratio analysis in a systematic and structured manner, we're in a good position to start our forecasting. That is, how do we think things will change in the future? Our forecasting procedure follows our ratio analysis. We'll forecast a condensed version of a firm's financial statements. There's plenty of evidence out there that humans tend not to forecast very well. So if there's one key thing we want you to achieve from this course, it's improving your forecasting. That alone will provide you with a big competitive advantage over people you're competing against in business or in investment and so on. The next part combines these skills in addressing the question of valuation, where we combine all our prior analytical steps. Once we determine what we believe the value of a firm is, we can then compare that with the prevailing share price. Using valuation estimates is one step in a larger investment process that involves establishing the objectives of the investor, forming expectations about future returns and risks of individual securities, and combining individual securities into portfolios to maximise progress towards the investment objectives. As part of our analysis, we'll consider the role of market efficiency, how you should invest your, t your time as an analyst depends at least in part on how quickly and accurately information flows through markets and becomes reflected in security prices. We will also think about how to use the market-based valuation multiples, such as the price earnings ratio, or PE, or the EV to EBITDA ratios to evaluate how the capital markets view a particular stock along with practical advantages and disadvantages of using market-based valuation multiples. Finally, we will use the tools we have been developing over the course to undertake credit analysis, that is, assessing the firm from the perspective of potential lenders or credit rating agencies. The course will focus on current real-world examples we will be contemplating a full analysis and valuation of JB Hi-Fi throughout the term. And that 
process is going to inform you on your own company analysis and valuation. That's the task that you'll be completing as part of your major project over the term. You'll find course materials and weekly videos that will be placed on the course Moodle page, as well as additional readings and the discussion forums that form part of your weekly participation. Have a look around. I'm looking forward to working with you over the course of the term.